Blah. We, it was a great week. It was great. I can't believe I have to do it all again next week. All right, hello friends. Welcome back to Crazy Brave Homeschool. I am excited to do this video based on our first week back to homeschool for my second grader and TKer. So I wanted to make a video that kind of goes over what some of the hits and misses were, how our first day back was, and just some lasting thoughts from the first week of school. Oh, and look, my kitty is here. This is Ellie. She never appears in my videos because she's always out hunting mice. All right, so I have a stack of hits, like absolute hits from this week. And then I have a stack of, I don't really want to call them misses because it's the first week and, oh, Kitty wants to get out. Okay, do you want to get out? Because it's just the first week and um, I know that things can turn around, but it is a stack of stuff that like, eh, wasn't amazing. So what I will say about the first week is that it went really well. I am really pleased with how the kids received the material. I, my, my gong over here is <laughs> echoing my voice. I was surprised at how long the days were. So I did tell my kids, and I'd say like this was sort of like a hit, is that I told my kids that they should expect our school day to go from nine until noon every day. We are doing school four days a week this year, which is a lot different than last year. We did five, but they are doing an outdoor program on Thursdays starting in September. And so I just wanted to start off that, that schedule now, four days a week. So I expected our school days to be a little longer. Um, they easily went from nine to noon, um, which is not a bad school day. That's awesome. But there's, you know, they're kind of, they're still kind of young. My TK is only four and a half. Obviously, he's not doing school that long, but he's in and out, you know. And then my daughter, my daughter's work, yeah, is, it's taking roughly three hours. But, like, I'm pausing her to then go to my son. I mean, like, this is, like, like the, the biggest kind of impression from the week is that teaching two kids is a lot different than teaching one. Um, and yeah, I guess I'm just surprised to see how easily three hours went by and I'm, and I'm like, wow, okay, this is a lot of school every day for us, uh, for me, you know, to then get back to housework, my work and, um, all, and then the kids social life. So yeah, I, it was a busy week. It was, it was intense. Oh yeah, so welcome back to my camper. <laughs> we don't do school. I, I don't live in this tiny little thing, although some days I think it would be really nice. Um, if you guys are new here, I'm Ashley, and I have two kids, as you gathered, second grade and TK. Uh, this is our third year homeschooling, and um, let's get into what some of these hits and misses were from our first week. Okay, so first day of school went really well. It was on Monday and we just did like a fun day. I didn't introduce a lot of curriculum at all. We just opened, the kids opened up a couple of gifts. Um, I'll start there. So their pencil boxes and their notebooks that I gave them were a huge hit. <laughs> I didn't think they were really gonna care, but they decorated their pencil boxes with stickers and they just like loved that so much. They've been carrying them around all week. They bring them in the car. Uh, my daughter's already filled up like half of her notebook with just, you know, her own little things that she likes to put in there. It's not school related. Okay, so those went over really well. Um, let's start with the games. So we've been playing a couple of these games all week. Um, the biggest hit of the week, Poop Tracks, this Junior Ranger Poop Tracks card game. We've probably played this at least 20 times. They And they can play it together. So this says ages six and up, but my son is four and he's easily playing this. 
Um, and it, it definitely takes some brain work. I mean, you have to put three cards together that, that set the scene of the animal, the tracks that they make and the poop that they make. Um, and so you've got to memorize, you know, uh, all, you know, you have to memorize all that for each animal. So I'm really impressed with them that they can do this so easily. Um, but they have been absolutely loving it. Like, obsessed with this game. So I really recommend this if you have kids that like animals and poop. Okay. The other games that we got. So we have played this a few times now. Dino Math Tracks. Um, I didn't know if this, if my son would be able to do this because it's six and up, but he's pretty advanced in math. But honestly, you don't really have to like know your place values, um, your place value numbers to play this. That's what this game is all about. Um, but you can't, but it comes with these like dinosaur toys. I was worried he was going to want to like take them out and play with them, but he agreed to leave them in the game, but it comes with all of these little dinos and he is obsessed with dinos. Um, and then it has level, like you can level up with these like cards. We haven't leveled up yet. It's for ages seven and up. But for the age of six and up, my four-year-old's been playing it just fine. Um, and it has introduced him to place value. But I wouldn't say you really have to know it to play it. So I think a four-year-old can play this just fine. They've really been liking this. Um, the other game, this puzzle, we have done this a few times now. They really like this puzzle. They're just excited to have a new puzzle. And this puzzle is cool. It talks all about different birds in the biomes that they live in and that it has a bunch of cool facts on the back here. Um, and it's really like a big, beautiful, beautifully colored puzzle about birds. The game that was not so much a hit, um, we haven't played the ecosystem game I got yet because it is a little advanced. Like my son wouldn't be able to do it. And it's, um, I think my daughter could, but like, I don't know. I think I just didn't want to wrap my head around it this week. This game camp is easily for ages four and up. Um, but it's kind of boring. It doesn't have, it has trivia questions, but like half the game, you're just going to a, you're going to a, your, your little pawn or whatever is traveling the board and a lot of spots you don't do anything. You just wait till your next turn. I think that there could have been a lot more trivia with each spot than there was. So it's a little boring. My kids still wanted to play it a couple of times. They just love games. But um, I would say this was not an absolute hit. Okay, so those are the games. Some other hits. Um, I showed these in a haul video last week. The large monthly planners. So this was um, my idea for the year for calendar work. Uh, they each get their own planner. They're big. And there's a two-page spread for each month. And so, oh my God, my gong. Um, my idea for each day was that they would draw a picture. So they numbered the whole calendar. And that they would draw a picture for like something that was happening that day. Or the weather. Or like how they were feeling. So for the first day, my daughter was going to see a friend that day. So she drew that. The second day, she was really grumpy. So she grew, she drew a face of her being grumpy. Then the next day was co-op where we go to, a, uh, we're doing a nature walk. And then the next day, why is there, oh, <laughs> mom had to run a bunch of errands by herself. So she drew a picture of me in my car, which means that I will be gone all day. <laughs> But, okay, so my seven-year-old loved this. So did my four-year-old. He did pictures. He even, oh my gosh, look at his, look at his numbers. He's so careful when he writes his numbers. He's so great. And then these are his pictures for each day. So this went over really well. I guess we won't do it on the weekends. Or maybe they could draw a picture of what we did that weekend on Monday if they wanted to. Um... But these went over great. So we start our day with these and the kids um, are into it. Okay, another great hit. I showed this in a haul video last week. Words I use when I write. I got just my daughter this. Um, this is 
It's from Modern Learning Press. I got it on Amazon. It is just a little notebook of common words that kids would use when they're learning how to write. So it goes alphabetically. And my daughter is, she's still learning to read. She's a, a bit of a slower reader, but she loves writing and she loves making books. And so she's constantly asking me how to spell words. So I figured this would be perfect for her. And I told her that it's hers. Like she can decorate it. She can keep it with her in her room or wherever. Like I'm not going to like make her do this. This is just something that she can use. Um, as she's learning to write new words. And she definitely already filled in 10 words in here about, and yeah, she's just, you know, ma'am and mermaid, she wanted to know. So this is great. And I think that she's gonna use this as a resource uh, for years to come. So another hit, time to rhyme uh, with California native plants and animals. So this is written by at the time, a nine-year-old girl, her name is Fatima Mohammed. She's from California. Um, her mom even reached out to me when she saw my haul video and was like so pleased that I was, you know, like promoting her daughter's book on my YouTube uh, because how sweet that a nine-year-old went to the work to publish this book. She got it on Amazon. So it's rhymes, um, rhyming poems about California native plants and animals. And then she has her illustrations that she also did. So we started this, um, the whole week we read her first poem, Mountain Lion. My charter school has yet to purchase the learning guide that Fatima Muhammad created to pair with this. So we are gonna be doing a poetry study on each of these, but I don't have the learning guide yet to show you. But my kids loved this Mountain Lion poem. It's funny, it's educational. Um, we read this every morning at the start of school and it went really well. Okay. Another hit, um, we did the all about me lap book. We started it. So my plan for these is to just do these once a week. Um, so this is my son Woody's, this is Poppy's. Um, we only put in, so a lap book is just a file folder that you fold in a way that opens up like this. And then on the inside, it will eventually look like this. So it's just all these little things about them, their favorite things. Um, and then we did do a couple of these. What did she do? Her favorite food and her favorite sport. So we'll come back to this. I'm, I'm thinking this will take like six weeks. Um, we're just going to do a little bit at a time so that the kids don't lose interest. That's those. Okay. Uh, those were a hit. Another hit was our vocabulary this week. So for vocab, we're doing this twice a week. I got this all the words book from Amazon. This is, um, created by a small company. And then once upon a word, a word origin dictionary is where we are choosing the words out of, I apologize if some of this is a repeat because I went over a lot of these in my haul videos. Um, so we chose a couple of the A words and this book is cool. It's, so for like this word abolish, um, she wrote the word, she drew the picture and then she, I, I wrote the definition in. She's, she's still a, a new writer. And then um, she would give me a sentence for the word. And then we would find if it was a Latin, had a Latin or Greek root. And then she would come up with another word that you could use instead of abolish. And she used the word ban, which I was so impressed with. And then we did the word abyss. You know, she drew the ocean. She came up with, with a sentence. We defined it. She came up with another word for it. So th th this one, great. We're just doing this twice a week. I don't think that, I think she'll get burnt out on it if we do it every day. Um, but this is a really fun way to learn vocabulary. Okay, this might have been the biggest hit aside from our poop tracks game. The safety unit from The Good and the Beautiful. I haven't gone over this yet with you guys because it's a part of our morning basket rotation, which I haven't made a video for yet, but we are doing the safety unit for, I think this goes for 10 weeks. 
we're doing it twice a week. So we're doing one lesson per day. So two lessons a week. Um, I did, I did not pair the student notebook with this because it's for grades three through eight and she, she's not really writing much yet, but I did get two of these safety activity books that are just like coloring. Um, this was cute. They drew a fire truck. Like it's takes you through the steps of how to draw a fire truck. This is like, you know, an, a fire escape route that they did. It's a lot of coloring and stuff like that. So this is just like a fun thing that they can do while you're doing the readings from the safety guide. Um, I'm not going to do a flip through of this. You know, this video will get too long. But um, we did the first lesson was just like, I think just like a general safety lesson. The second one was fire safety. So like they just get so excited to talk about how to be safe and what's dangerous and what you should do and what you shouldn't do. I mean, my seven-year-old daughter, she's like Lassie. Like she will tell me anytime there is something precarious going on. So she just like, why? I mean, okay, I'm like imagining having to do this in like a second grade classroom with like 25 kids. And I can't even imagine how chaotic it would be because my four and seven-year-old we're just like so chatty through this whole thing, wanting to just talk all about, well, I know what to do if there's a fire and I know what to do if, you know, you know, like it's just, it was a lot. It was very chaotic, but it was very fun. Um, and they really looked forward to it on the two days that we did it. And my daughter on Friday said, what are we doing for safety today? And I said, nothing. <laughs> We're not doing it again until next week. So we have water safety coming up. There's just, it's great. And it's a great age to start introducing this stuff. Um, so highly recommend this program, but it was wild. <laughs> okay. Um, a couple other hits for my son. So this is the first time I'm really schooling him. Um, we are doing as a supplement, get ready for the code. This is a supplement in addition to what we're doing for our, uh, reading, um, phonics, but he, he likes this. He just like, he'll easily go through a couple pages or more. He really likes the writing parts of this. And you can see he just likes to start writing his own things. And then it's just really cute. You know, it's like we go over the letter sound of B and then he colors in the things that start with B. <laughs> so, and then, you know, it's just, it's real simple stuff. Circling all the lowercase and uppercase Fs. I wouldn't say he's wild for this, but um, but he does it. I mean, he, he, I'd say he's, enjoys it. Uh, he doesn't ask for it. Okay. The, uh, pre-writing from the good and the beautiful. He loves this. This is just tracing and he loves it. He could easily bust out four or five pages of this. So it's like, you know, simple stuff like the lines or like drawing the rungs on the ladder. So it's pre-writing, right? It's like training their hands to, to start writing. Um, I feel like I could have gotten the, the level one or pre or what, what is it? I think it's the kindergarten level. I don't know. It's not important for me, for him to start learning to write letters and numbers because he's only four, but he really likes it and he's actually really good at it and he really takes his time. So I'm hoping we can just kind of bust this out over the next couple of months and then I can start him on a writing program. So on that note, for my son, we started all about reading, pre-reading. <sighs> I love it. I love it in a way that makes me kind of sad that I didn't figure this out for my daughter sooner. And I'm not going to go on. I'm not going to go on and on about my daughter's reading. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do a video of our phonics journey, which might come as like some comfort to other homeschool families that have struggling readers. Um, but this is going to hold my hand. It's going to hold my heart because it is just laid out for me. It is scripted in a way that is fun. It comes with this puppet that he loves. Um, the crafts for the letters, I didn't know if he would be really into because they're kind of simple. He loved it. Um, I just, this program warmed my heart this week and I feel really grateful 
that we have it and we are starting him off on the right foot. Um, my daughter's phonics, I haven't gone over this yet because we've just been on a wild journey with her phonics. I'm not going to go over much about this program. I'm going to save this for a different video. She is use, using Treasure Hunt Reading, which is a free online resource. Half of it is taught on the computer, something I never really thought I would do. But you never know until you know and you're in it and you're just like in the weeds looking for solutions. This is going well. She, um, We only did the last third of the first journey because she already knew, you know, all of her letter sounds and stuff. I just wanted to do some review. Um, and honestly, she, she needed it. We could stick with journey one a little longer, but we are coming to the end and we're going into journey two, which I think is on par with um, between first and second grade. I don't really know. It kind of seems that way to me. I think by the end of journey two, she would be at a second or third grade level. So I have all about reading level two for her. I just don't think she's ready for it. So we are doing this for a little while until I think that she's ready for all about reading level two. Um, but this is going, this is going well. Okay. I just wanted to mention that. So some things that were maybe not a huge hit, but I'm not getting rid of yet because it's too early to make that decision. Um, our read aloud this month is Goonie Bird Green. Um, sh I wouldn't say she doesn't like this. She's not incessantly asking for it like she does with most of our chapter book read alouds. Um, this re reminds her a lot of Pippi Longstocking, like the character is very similar. And um, she loves Pippi. So I think she's a little put off that there's this like other girl that's kind of like her. Um, and there's not like a lot of drama in the book. It's like, it's very second grade appropriate, but my daughter loves drama and like a wild adventure. So this is a little tame, but, um, you know, we're halfway through. I think we'll finish. Um, we jumped back into our beautiful feet, us geography. We were halfway through when we stopped cause we didn't start until January of last year. And, um, you guys, it's like, I don't even know why I'm sticking with it. I don't like the books that are paired with this. There, we've only read two so far and there is a stack of books. So that's why I'm not quitting yet because I've only read a couple of the books, but, it, but I don't like them. And um, my kids don't like them. And then the curriculum part of this is quite boring as well. I'd say the only fun part of this program for us is the big map that it comes with where the kids get to paint in or color in the states. But they don't even go wild about that either because she knows I'm going to make her label it as well. Um, so, and she's not really into it. So I don't know. I'm sticking with it for now. I don't know what else to say about it. We're not wild about it. Um, our treehouse nature studies. So I should just take this down. Why do I even have this up? Our treehouse nature studies summer. I had hoped that we were going to do this all summer long, but when I realized that her reading just really needed some prime focus, we stopped doing this for the last six weeks of summer and then we picked it back up again. So we are on, it goes 13 weeks. We are on week, um, starting week eight or nine. And so I'm hoping that we finish this, you know, by like mid end of September so that we can start the autumn unit when it really starts to feel like autumn. But honestly, where we live on the central coast of California, it feels like summer until October. Um, we get a really crummy summer from June to July and then August and September and sometimes October are really nice. So it still feels like summer here. I'm fine to continue this nature study until then. I'm going to do a proper review on this. I see the things that the kids love the most about this are some of the songs and then the picture study and nature study, but like the poetry and the copy work, some of the activity, like some of the activities are good. I'll do a review. We don't do all of it. Okay. I have not really gone over what we're doing for science this year. I'm going to do a separate video on our science and social studies picks. So I'm not going to say a whole lot about this, but we are doing biology for the grammar stage, which is a classical style of uh, science curriculum. 
Um, we just did our first week. Eh, it was a little underwhelming and it seems like a lot of busy work. And again, my daughter's not writing much. So I'm not surprised about that. I knew it when I bought it. I saw everything that comes with it. Um, so I guess I'm just reaffirming that it's a lot of busy work, but, um, I'm hoping next week is maybe a little bit more exciting, but, but it's fine. It's good. I'm not seeing anything negative about it yet. It was just a little underwhelming. All right. So we started a spelling program for my daughter this year, and this is probably one of the more rigorous things that we're doing alongside phonics and math. Um, because it's really meant to be done every day. Each lesson is broken into five parts, which would mean five times a week. We're only doing school four days a week, so we'll be one day behind that. Um, but she did do it every day this week. Um, it's very quick, so I'm not concerned about it. Um, and I think that it's going to be really good. It is some copy work, which is not her favorite, but she needs to do it. Um you say this little poem uh, or this this rhyme, Jack and Jill, which I don't think she'd ever really learned before. <laughs> you say it, you clap out the rhythm, which is cool. Um, she points to the words as you read them. She copies down a, a short sentence. Um, she says the letter sounds as she writes them. And then she copies these words underneath, which eventually she will be spelling the words that I dictate to her. Um, so the deal with this is that it is a very, I think it's sort of a classical approach. It's very repetitive and it's built around memorization. Um, but I don't know a whole lot about the program yet since we just started it. But from what I'm seeing anyway, it's a lot of repetition and memorization, which is great for kids at this age. Um, so this is going well so far. Um, I don't get a lot of pushback from it, but I'm not calling it a hit because she's not like crazy about it. So alongside language arts, we, we picked back up on first language lessons and we are only like 20 lessons into this out of a hundred. So we're going to be with this for a while. I do really like this. This is also a classical, um, curriculum. I like it because the lessons are short. Again, it's built around memorization, repetition. They're very gentle lessons. Um, I just, I love this book. I, th I think it's fantastic. Um, they recommend pairing it with, it can be paired with a couple different um, writing curriculums. But the grammar writing curriculum that they uh, recommend is growing with grammar. So this is our first time doing this. Um, because she's still learning to read and write, I have been filling in some of it for her, um, but she's also been doing some of it on her own. Um, so each lesson is two pages. I th we're only doing it two days a week, and I think one of the days it was just too much to do the two pages. Um, but just to give you a quick example of what this is like, lesson one is an introduction to sentences. So you give an example of what a sentence is, and then it's up to her to finish the sentences down here. And this was funny because she, she's really funny and she just likes to make people laugh. So like, for instance, number one is a hungry cow blank. And then she has to finish the sentence, which she did very easily. She said, a hungry cow hopped on the roof for a chicken to eat. Okay, it's a sentence. Number two, the beautiful butterfly blank. She said, the beautiful butterfly was fluttering in the forest and ate a cow. <laughs> and then spiders blank. She said, spiders are venomous and can eat you up. So she actually had a lot of fun with that. Um, I guess I would put this maybe more under the hit. Maybe, we'll see. But I'm happy that we have a grammar, um, like a writing grammar program this year. I'm almost done. So we started back up with our American Girl History. Oof, I feel like I'm not ready. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of reading. It's a lot of activities. It's a lot of notebooking. And she added in an extra girl, my daughter, because she really wanted to do this Caroline and Caroline did not come with the full bundle of American Girls. But um, I think she likes her because she kind of looks like her. So 
We did Caroline this week. I didn't put this under the hits because it took us a while to get through Meet Caroline. My daughter was a little bored of it. Um, and the first week of activities was a little difficult. It was learning how to tie a Flemish knot, which was even too difficult for me. And then um, reading Mr. Madison's War about the War of 1812 was too serious. It was, I'm sorry, excuse me, was over her head. Um, and then the notebooking page was just map work, which she doesn't like get super excited about map work. So week one of Caroline eh, was not great, but we're moving on to book two, um, Caroline's Secret Message. And um, my daughter seems into it and I think that it'll be just fine. Even though my daughter has loved American Girl History, that doesn't mean that she's loved every single girl or every single book that we've read. Um, okay, and the last thing is I rearrange myself here. Mm. The last thing I'm going to talk about is our math for my son and supplement math for my daughter. I'm not going to talk about my daughter's math curriculum because we do Right Start. We moved on to Level B. It's going great. My daughter's really comfortable with Right Start. We skipped the first 17 lessons because they were a lot of review and we did a lot of math over the summer. So um, yeah, Right Start's always a hit for us. This is a supplement from a company called The Beauty of Play. It's a Waldorf inspired math curriculum. I was really intrigued by it because as you can see, it's very colorful and it involves a lot of activities built around color and using your hands, using your bodies. My voice is getting really tired. Um, so I knew that this curriculum was is, is not open and go. It is a lot of reading for the parent to like digest and really try to embody um, these math philosophies. So as you can see, like it's just, it's a lot of kind of reading on the parent's end. The lessons are not like broken down. So there are activities that are broken down. So I had an idea for a couple of activities I wanted to do this week. Um, for my son, we're doing quality of numbers, which is introducing the numbers one through 12. He knows those numbers, but this introduces them in a way that is just much more um, complete. It's learning their skip counting and their patterns and um, all, all of their um, factors and Roman numerals. Um, and so it is a complete education on the numbers of one through 12, which I love. So we introduced the number one. The idea with um, these curricula from the Beauty of Play is that you pair them with a large sketch pad as their math notebook because there is a lot of documenting of these numbers in these like really creative, um, colorful ways. So we did the number one uh, with my son and it was good. I'm not gonna say this was a miss. It, it was good. He drew the sun because there's only one sun. And then he wrote, uh, he wrote the number one Roman numeral. And then we did a number line, um, skip counting by ones or counting by ones. So this is like his little study for the week of the number one. And every week we will do a drawing. Um, I usually will do the drawing first that looked like this. Um, which, you know, as you can see, is really similar. And then he, um, a couple days out of the week, we would work on the drawing. So mine is like this and his is like this. Um, so we did some like actual, um, like body jumping on a number line that I put in the house out of just like uh, washi tape. And the kids really loved that. They had a really good time. Uh, so we did that. We introduced the uh, Cuisinaire rods, which are um, these little blocks or rods that are based on numbers one through 10. Um, and, you know, we kind of messed around with like building the stairs, figuring out which color block correlates to which number. Those went over pretty well. He was excited to play with those. Um, and then for my daughter, um, I'm doing the multiplication and division 
year one with her. And for her um, activity this week, we looked at multiples of 10 is, is where this curriculum recommends that you start. Um, and so we played around with the rods. We played around with the number chart, our like treasures from Jennifer board, skip counting by tens with like a little peg doll. Um, that went fine. And then this was her study of the number tens. So we, um, I got stamp pads that match the color of each Cuisinaire rod. And um, we would stamp one for 10, two for 20, three for 30, four for 40. And then she made a number line. Um, okay, so why am I not like sounding more excited about this curriculum? I think because our school day is just like a lot more than it was, um, having a curriculum that doesn't necessarily hold your hand. It's just sort of like, here are some ideas, but you do you and you do it the way your family would would do it. Um, I don't feel like I have like enough like brain power to, I, I don't know. So I kind of felt like I was just like sitting down with the activity. I had a plan. I planned it out. As you can see, I had a plan for Poppy week one. But then it's like I'm sitting with it and I just sort of like fumble. And it's like you got to hold the kids' attention, right? You've got to got to keep it going. Don't trip up or else they're going to start to lose, you know, their patience. Um, and so I'm not really phrasing this well, but I just sort of feel like um, it wasn't just it wasn't like super simple. And I think I'm looking for simple right now. Um, for my daughter, we're only doing this once a week and then we're doing her right start three days. For my son though, this is my plan for the 12 weeks for each number so that he can just really get like a solid understanding of each number. Um, so I think I'll get better at it and there are a lot more activities. So I think that like, once I start playing around with a few of them, I'll see which ones work. Um, so I don't know, it didn't go poorly. I think I just felt a little lost. Um, and that's definitely not how I wanna feel. I wanna feel confident and um, just keep things moving along. So um, to be continued if we decide that we really love this curriculum or not. And then one more thing I forgot to mention, um, we did pull out the LMNOP guide, which is a Waldorf curriculum for learning your letters. These cards with poems are a separate purchase, but they're kind of meant to be paired together. Um, so I used this on the first day with letter A, but again, it's, it's kind of similar to this where it's like, here's some great ideas. And like, here are the ways that you should consider moving your body while you tell the poem and you read the story and hear all the hand gestures. And I am just like, I don't know. I just don't feel like I have the brain power to really embody all of that. I just, I love all about reading because it's just open and go, right? And they're doing the hard work for you. I don't want to do the hard work. This is hard enough. So I put this down, plus it doesn't really go along with All About Reading, the way that they introduce all the sounds and stuff. So I think I'm gonna set this down and just use the cards, which um, were really cute. Like I displayed, so for this week we did letters A and B, and I displayed the A with all of these, you know, little note cards and stuff, um, and the letter B, or flashcards, and, um, it was great. It was a really great little display. Oh, and I'll have to show a video here. One of the major hits of the week was this little sensory box that I made hiding the letters. Um, in this week I did quinoa. I'm going to change up the material every week and maybe do sand one week or rice. No. Um, oh, but my, my kids video. dug for these letters, you know, A and B, like multiple times this week and they loved it. So our little alphabet display went really well. Um, I don't think I need this. I think all about reading is going to be plenty for us this year, but the poems on these cards are really sweet and I'm really loving these. So, okay. Blah. 
that's it. That's all I have for you guys. We, it was a great week. It was great. I can't believe I have to do it all again next week. <laughs> uh, plan ahead, plan ahead, plan ahead. I am surprised though that our schedule for next week is going to look really similar. I was thinking that we were going to have too much on our plate. I was going to have to cut some things. And honestly, everything worked. I can't believe it. Okay, you guys, I hope that you have had a great first week or second week or third week or summer schooling or wherever you are at, or if your first week's coming up, I wish you a really great week like we had. Um, I'm so glad it's the weekend. Okay, I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.